So my name is uh, Dev. So basically, I I work as a DevOps technical lead in uh, in BNP Paribas. I've been here in Singapore for around eight years now. So basically, I'm I'm leading a digital digital transformation project here in Singapore and as well as in in, in Europe. And tonight I'll be sharing with you some of the things that I'm working on these three areas, which is AI, IoT, and cloud. So actually I'm just doing this out of my weekday job, so it's just a hobby. And uh, Ryan told me that you are computer engineering students. Yes, sir. ECE, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. So it, I thought that uh, I should bring my Raspberry Pi as long as with my things, so that you might have some idea when you when, when you are about to do some thesis. Um, uh, when is your design project? There are the implementation of Posita, sir. Implementation it's going on? Okay. So you might get some idea and later on if you have some question work. Uh, I hope I can I can uh, simulate everything. I, I only prepared around eight slides so that I can do a print flow presentation and some demo. Okay? So yeah, just a little bit about myself. Um, some uh, certifications I had. Uh, Docker, cert I'm a Docker certified elastic. Uh, Cloud in AWS and Java 7 and 8. So in, in my uh, initial stage of my career, I started as a Java developer, okay? And later on, I became interested in automation. So I, 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 I moved into DevOps area. So by the time you, you leave uh, university, or by the time you join industry, you, you might be able to, to hear these terminologies. DevOps and maybe some, lots of things that I'm going to walk you through later, so you'll be able to hear about those those kind of things. Okay, so let's jump in. I only have 30 minutes. Okay, so these are the agendas that I'm going to present today. So uh, last June, I think I, I we joined in one of the hackathon here in Singapore. Uh, what I'm going to show you is the senior and PWD assistant. So just this Raspberry Pi is going to solve some of the problems here in Singapore because I loaded some machine learning and deep learning uh, algorithm within this Raspberry Pi, which is high cascade. So I'm going to give a, a quick walkthrough on this plus the Python and Elastic Stack. So uh, I'm going to provision Elastic Stack in, in, in the cloud as well as uh, using Docker platform. Okay. Have you heard about this before? Sounds right. Elastic Docker containerization. Okay. Okay. And then I'll give a demo. So I'll I'll I'll, I'll give a run through on the slides. Then I'll, I'll jump into the demo. Okay. Okay. One of the problem that we or uh, I personally notice in Singapore is that we have different bus stops here in Singapore. But the thing is, if a specific bus stop or a certain bus stop is crowded. Um, when there's a PWD who wants to onboard in the bus, the problem is that if, if the area is crowded, the bus driver cannot see or they cannot, uh, because they are sitting, right? So they cannot see or they don't know whether if somebody or a PWD wants to onboard board in the bus, okay? So this is one of the problems that I noticed. So as a solution to this problem, what we proposed at the time was uh, to install a push button. You don't have you don't have to bring you don't have to do it in a mobile based application because not everybody is using mobile. I mean, especially senior citizen. Uh, how about those who are blind? So you have to just install a button and a braille. You know, in elevator we have this touch. They call it braille. Yes. Sir. So you just have to touch it and select which bus you are going to board in. So our idea is uh, this: before the bus reaches the bus stop. This PWD should have the ability to inform the bus driver that, hey, I'm a PWD, I want to onboard the bus. You should prioritize me. Which is happening, which is happening here in Singapore, which is very good, but the problem is that uh, notifying the bus driver, it's not there yet. So so they don't have the ability to, to, to see whether somebody is looking. Actually, I personally saw this in uh, Tanjung Katong. I'm the one who took this photo. That's why I, I, I got to know this problem. Okay, so later on, I'm going to show you how we solve this problem. And uh, another one is this. So here, in, there are some uh, pedestrian uh, crossing. So if 
if a senior citizen want, wants to cross the road, they have this card. I, I don't know what they call it. What they call it. It's, uh, you, you just have to tap it in order to extend the timer in the, uh, pedestrian. In the pedestrian. Okay. So, but the question is, what if the senior citizen lost it or they forgot to bring it? So it's a problem. So what what we propose? What we propose is to have um, uh, open computer vision or open CV driven by hard cascade algorithm to, to understand uh, who is standing or who wants to cross the pedestrian. So it should have the ability to predict the age of, of the people or senior citizen who wants to cross the road. Okay, You can achieve this using multiple uh, technologies, multiple different machine learning algorithms. Okay, one of the best thing that I have seen is hard cascade, which is very large. Okay, let's go to architecture, so that you you will have some idea on how how things will work. Okay, the, on the left side, this is what I told you about the the bus stop. So basically, uh, you can have a visual input. Visual input is used to to authenticate whether you are really a PWD or you are a senior citizen. Okay, we, we develop an AWS, did you use AWS cloud computing? Not yet. Okay, uh, AWS cloud offers different uh, services. So one service that we use in AWS cloud is called AWS, AWS recognition. So it's, of, from the name itself, of course, it, it means you can recognize things. So it can, uh, it it has the ability to understand who you are, based based on the image. So yeah, I have some some uh, sort code. So yeah, I just have to. So what we did at time is, from the real real time streaming from camera. So we use this Raspberry Pi or the IoT device to transmit the data to the cloud to AWS. Uh, recognition and uh, the good thing about it is you just have to submit the the image and if it's pre-recorded of course it has the ability to match who you are and to validate where, whether you are a senior citizen or PWD so once the data has been returned to the IoT device we submit it or we transmit it to an OSQL server just think of it as a server just a plain server we submit it to a server and then there are some subscriber, which is a GPS location or the UI, which is a dashboard in the bus, okay? Later on, I'll, you'll get to know more about what do I mean by this when, we, when I give you a walkthrough. On the other side, on the right side, uh, this is used for the pedestrian crossing. It's very simple, it's straightforward. So you have a visual input, which is the camera that take the information and it, it predicted that you are age, around the age of 65 and above, then IoT device will give the display as a, it will extend, let's say for example, by default it's 20 seconds, it will extend you up, up to 30 seconds for example. It depends on the configuration and the length of the uh, path, of course. Okay, in terms of technical stuff, so what do we, what do we use that time? So, of course, we have Raspberry Pi, we have camera, we have, uh, oh, of course, the Raspberry Pi itself. This is what I told you. We use AWS recognition, and then we transmit the data to Elastic, to Elastic server. And then, uh, just to mimic that whenever the bus moves, it transmits a GUIP location. Uh, I just develop a plain Python script to submit this data. And then a Kibana dashboard, this is, you can imagine that this is the one that is installed in the bus to notify the driver that there is a PWD waiting at that particular bus stop. And the demo, I, you, you, you'll, you'll get to uh, see exactly the, the data that is being transmitted to notify the bus driver, okay? And uh, yeah, of course, it's, it's being driven by, by switch. Once you press it, um, there's some metadata behind that uh, tax switch or that switch. So when I press that, of course you have to, to select multiple bus number. If I press bus one, it should transmit, okay, bus one. 
because it should not notify the driver in bus one, okay? It shouldn't notify the other bus number, of course. So when we submit the data, those, those metadata is very crucial. It has to be uh, transmitted properly. And what is this? Okay, I, for, I forgot to, sorry, I just prepared these slides uh, two days back. Uh, this IoT, this is the Raspberry, of course, and I will show you the LCD. I have an LCD here to show the countdown timer. Okay, uh, I don't spend too much time in the slides, and just go to the demo, okay? So that you will, you will be able to appreciate what I'm saying. So I'll be using the screen there. I don't know why it's not duplicating. Last time when I give a talk, Okay, okay, no problem. Okay, I, I pre provisioned one, uh, one VM or one virtual machine in the cloud. This is a Docker, Docker lab platform in the cloud. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, of course this is a Linux machine. What I'm going to do now is, if I go back to my slide, um, I'm going to provision this Elastic server in the cloud, or, the, or I call it as a noise QL server. The good thing about uh, uh, the good thing about this thing is I'm using DevOps toolchain. So when we say or when when we when I speak about DevOps, it's mostly about automation. So when you move to industry, once you join industry, and of course if you join uh, programming. Anything you can be anything actually. Once once you move out from university, you can choose a lot of a lot of uh, varieties, or you can choose different categories in information technology. But what I really love is programming. So anyway, I'll jump in and I'll, I'll show you how I can easily provision these two different components in just a plain YAML file. YAML file is just a markup language. So the good thing about this is, you define what do you want. Okay, so I call it as a Docker Compose file. What I want to do, or what I want to have is, I want to have two different services in the cloud, Elasticsearch and Kibana. Kibana is a UI. Elasticsearch is the server. Uh, this Elasticsearch is the one who will hold the information and the data that being transmitted from the client. Okay, so let me just, Send this thing back. Okay, this is the file that I show show you. So what is happening right now is when I trigger this command, Docker Compose app, it will provision the service that I the service that I want to have in the cloud. Okay. What happening is what what is happening is there's a Docker engine under the hood that that makes this these two services uh, up and running. So it, it will pull the image from Docker Hub. It's it's a kind of repository. If you have heard about Git. It's the same concept as Git. So here, instead of uh, pulling the the uh, codes, what I'm what I'm pulling is the snapshot or the image, okay, of Elastic and Kibana. So in just next few minutes, it should be up, and we should be able to see some ports that is uh, ready here for you to access. Okay, and also I prepare some script to prepare to 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 create the data. 
So I, I have some different post operations here to set up my data in Elasticsearch. So basically this will set up different bus stops. So as you can see, there is a geolocation, longitude and latitude. So are you familiar with Grab and Uber, right? So you will see later on the map that one specific object is moving based on the location. Okay, it will be a real time from the cloud. Okay, it's almost it's ready. Let me just load. I, I just load the data. Actually, uh, if you haven't proposed it, do you have you you have some proposal already in your thesis? Ah, okay, okay. Because I, I want to give you one good uh, use case in, in Philippines. Because with this technology, you can solve the problem in Ensa. Traffic problem. Okay, I, I loaded, I uploaded the bus, uh, shell script just just to configure my 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 UI. Okay, if I'm going to access this 5601 port, it should load my Kibana. I hope my internet connection is good because I'm just using my mobile. Okay. I hope I still have battery. Actually, this one is open source. Kibana and Elastics is open source. the data the bus stop and the bus index okay so the bus stop is uh, okay let me add the layers
Okay, these are the uh, five different bus stops, and uh, <coughs> let me just load the data for bus stops. So, if you are familiar with this road, this is the one in Teloplama, and uh, we are somewhere here. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to trigger my my Python script so that this uh, this represent the bus. If I if I trigger my Python script, I simulated the bus transmitting GUIP location, longitude and latitude. So once I run that that specific script, you should see the bus move. Okay. There, is, there, are, there are lots of longitude and latitude in the script. go back to my my UI it should start uh, transmitting the data to the server but uh, yeah so as you can see it's moving so it's a real-time it's a kind of a real-time data transmission from uh, from the bus itself which transmits longitude and latitude the good thing about this technology is that uh, you can calculate for example in, 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 in Philippines we have so many buses right so for us to maximize uh, the road and lessen the number of uh, or the volume of vehicles, we can use this technology in such a way that, um, let's say I have three passes in front, which is going on the same route. So this technology can calculate the differences between the second bus stop and the third one at the back. So they can give an advice to the back uh, or the third bus driver that you can slow down a bit this is your maximum speed so that we can we can um, we can simulate how, how, how to say it we can simulate a constant interval between different bosses okay so another thing that i'm going to show you is if i press the button i forgot to mention that if i press the button on bus tap number four it should notify the bus driver so it's from the raspberry pi but let me show you the data that let me show you first the data saying that it's not yet uh, the information is not yet 
been received by, by, by the survey. Okay, so what, what I'm saying is this bus stop number four, it, it means this is also the bus stop number four, this, this one. So if I press the button in Raspberry Pi, the data within this JSON object, this one is, w, is PW present, it should turn into true. Okay? I hope hindi na galaw yung connection kasi galing sa paper pa ko. So if I press this one. May raran pa pala ako. I have to run one one Python script before I press it. This one. Because it waits for the input, for the Raspberry Pi input before it transmits the data. Okay, so now it's ready to receive the data. server name because we, we dynamically provision the server. How many minutes have do I have? Still have? Five minutes. Okay, let me just try once again.
Okay, that's fine. I just check it later. Uh, I I just want to quickly show you the the, <laughs> the machine learning algorithm. So I think there are some some configuration that I miss. Uh, just one. Kasi mas maganda yung kaysa dito. It will just submit the data and it will just update this 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 data. It's it's nothing special than this. Okay. So I'm going to stream my, I'm going to connect to my Raspberry Pi. It works as a web access point from my laptop to Raspberry Pi. I, I turned off my internet connection because it, it will, it will uh, stream very slow. Okay. Seraya. I need your help to detect your uh, to your age. To predict your age. My age way or my, my weight? <laughs> okay. It will just uh, quickly load some of the models, TensorFlow, uh, hard hard cascade. Once it's ready, it will it should pop up this 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 visual camera, and let's see the predicted age of Mr. Mr. Ryan. This is the camera. So it, it, it is running locally in my 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 Raspberry Pi. It doesn't transmit any data to the cloud. So let's just wait in maybe just one one more minute. So it, it, it also uses open computer vision. You can also use that. So it, just 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 to be clear. So so yeah, so basically I, 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 I loaded the simple uh, hard cascade feature in, 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 in order to detect the the age. So you can you can try it. Come on, ka lang konti. Kasi uh, on the fly, So basically, what is happening is uh, during the streaming. It, it tries to it tries to find the pattern and, and it, it, it's, it is constantly submitting the the uh, it, it is constantly submitting different uh, features from the from the string data and then I have twenty seven so yeah so 
I think that ends my presentation. Sayang yung isang demo, hindi ko mana siguro natanggal yung so public. So, yun. Uh, if you have some question to me, maybe later you can ask me.